Trenbolone, the monster steroid. Of all the steroids you could abuse, Tren is the one you want to stay away from the most. You have a regular car, you put in a bigger engine, more horsepower. The problem is the vehicle is not meant to handle that much power. Guys are talking about Tren super liberally, like it's just, it's cool, it's Tren. You know, it's the crack. Yeah. It's the crack of steroids. Bro, what the hell is Tren and why is everybody taking it? The ultimate steroid, the one that's going to get you bigger than ever. But the thing is, people don't realize how dangerous it is to use. Today, we're talking about the controversial steroid commonly known as Trenbolone. Tren. Tren Ace, or the bootleg version, Trenabol. This performance enhancing drug, or PED for short, is increasingly gaining in popularity in the bodybuilding industry because of its dramatic effects. We're gonna discuss what it is, why it's so popular, and the potential side effects. So prepare for some heavy lifting, some brain building, cause we're learning today. On a weekly basis, we bring you interesting information about medical and science topics with the goal of helping you think like a surgeon. One of the most important skills for a surgeon is an ability to think critically. Today's sponsor, Brilliant, provides a service that helps you to develop this and other science-related skills. Brilliant is one of the best ways to learn math, computer science, and data science in an enjoyable and intuitive manner. Brilliant offers a selection of thousands of lessons from a wide variety of topics that range from basic to advanced levels. They are constantly updating their library of lessons, so you will always find new topics to select from. One of the newest courses added just this month is a case study, unlocking rental value on Airbnb. So don't think for a second that the lessons aren't generally applicable or that they can't help you with your day-to-day -day life. With Brilliant, Learning about science becomes fun and interactive. For myself, as a content creator, I am particularly drawn to courses like Case Study Going Viral on X, which teach me about the factors that are involved in making content go viral and how to assess content to determine if it is in fact real. If you want to learn how to think critically like a surgeon, Brilliant is a fantastic place to start. And yo, it's never too late to start. You can get started right now. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Chris Rayner or click on the link in the description. The first 200 who visit the link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. First, Let's take a quick look at steroids in general. Many bodybuilders consider them almost a necessity for any title competition. To go pro, it's a must. And at this point, people are relatively open about their usage compared to a few decades ago. There are many well-known bodybuilders that have admitted to taking steroids, such as Ronnie Coleman and Darian Yates. Pre-conscious, 150 milligrams. Trembolone. While others may or may not be taking them. But given some of their massive forms, it seems like it's a possibility, if not a probability. The monster-like physique that we are seeing more often nowadays may have to do with an increase in the availability of steroids or an upgrade in their chemistry, the effectiveness of the drugs themselves, or it may have to do with other factors. One theory proposed is that the genetically blessed are seeing the financial opportunities and clout that the modern bodybuilding industry provides and are flocking to it whereas before it was more about the sport. So it's not necessarily that the physiques are growing per se, but just possibly that we are seeing more huge guys coming out of the woodwork. Another theory is that actual training methods have shifted. People's focuses have shifted from more reps, more gym time, less weight, less rest, to less reps, less gym time, more weight, more rest. Basically cramming more intensity into a shorter workout. Still. In the attempt to get ripped, many bodybuilders will push themselves to the extreme in terms of the actual amount of weight they're lifting to the point some would consider overtraining. So these performance enhancing drugs help the modern bodybuilder go beyond just big. As explained in an article written by journalists Bonnie Berkowitz and William Neff for the Washington Post, the classic look was a wide back with a narrow waist. No part disproportionately large or small. Skin appeared almost shrink wrapped over muscles as if carved by a sculptor. And some judges may still like that look in some natural shows that drug test competitors or certain divisions of bodybuilding shows. However, the mass monster that's been on the scene since the 1990s has been wowing the crowds in the open categories. 
This is where the hugest of the huge compete. And as Brad Schoenfeld, a professor at Lehman College in New York and author of several books on bodybuilding and muscle growth puts it, when people go to the zoo, they wanna see lions and tigers. He said, not cats and dogs. Regardless of why, the trending physique is definitely freaking huge. And feeling that pressure, many bodybuilders resort to steroids to achieve that look. Well, resort to, more like many consider it an inevitability in professional bodybuilding, period. So what are steroids really? Steroids are a general class of molecules that all share a characteristic four ring nucleus. They can be natural hormones or synthetic drugs. They help regulate various functions in the body. In medicine, they're used to treat hormone imbalances, inflammation, and muscle wasting conditions, among other uses. In other cases, well... Uh, that's not stigma, that's f***ing true. It's true. Yeah, my balls are tiny. <laughs> well. Functionally, steroids are classified as endocrine hormones that fall into five categories. Androgens, estrogens, progestins, mineralocorticoids, and glucocorticoids. They all possess anabolic or catabolic properties in the body. Anabolic reactions are about building, like constructing muscle protein and other cellular components. They need extra energy. So for muscle growth, you need to consume more calories than you burn. On the flip side, catabolic reactions break things down, like glucose or fat to release energy. So if you are in need of a sudden burst of energy to protect yourself, you'd need to burn some calories quickly. Tren or Trenbolone is a highly effective synthetic anabolic steroid derived from Nandrolone by making specific modifications to its chemical structure. Often referred to as a designer steroid, meaning a synthetic compound that is structurally similar to natural hormones like testosterone, but has been modified to enhance their anabolic effects while reducing androgenic effects. Androgen, meaning masculinizing, as in it promotes the development of male secondary sexual characteristics and anabolic, meaning muscle building. So Tren helps stimulate substantial muscle growth and protein synthesis in the body by binding to androgen receptors. And the results increase in performance and physique. However, Tren Balone wasn't ever and still isn't actually on the market. So technically it's illegal, but that's not unique to Tren. All steroids are illegal for use without a valid prescription or for general distribution. Steroids are Schedule Three substances under the Controlled Substances Act. So how are people getting it and what is it officially used for? You can go into any single gym and buy steroids within five minutes of being in there. That's nuts, man. They're very, very available. Trenbolone was first synthesized in 1963 and was originally classified as a veterinary androgenic anabolic steroid, or AAS, and actually used in the agricultural industry to bulk up cattle and other livestock for slaughter. It increases appetite and muscle growth, making the cows extra beefy, bro, which for the farmers is great for business. And then you're using some drug for cows at dosages higher than the cows use. There are two forms that it can be administered in. Finaject, an intramuscular injection, and Finaplex, or pellets. Like you're not a cow. In the 80s, a French pharmaceutical company developed the form of Tren for human consumption. Parabolin, or Trenbolone, hexahydrobenzyl carbonate, if you wanna be fancy with it. The drug was meant for treating muscle wasting conditions, malnutrition, and osteoporosis. This was brought to market, though never in the international market, and has since been taken off the market even in France. In the decades that followed, maybe inspired by what they saw on the farm, bodybuilders started using these trend variations for performance enhancement. To this day, usage has dramatically increased, though it is hard to get exact figures because of the fact that many do not admit to using it openly. According to the book, Doping in Sport and Fitness, the increase in its usage may actually be because of the increase in availability of raw powders from underground steroid labs, including those from China. In the 80s and 90s, there's no underground steroids. There is none. It's all pharmaceutical and you can get it. These raw materials make it easier for illicit manufacturers to produce Trenbolone and distribute it on the black market. Well, one thing's for sure. However people are getting it, they are getting it and using it. A lot of these Trenbolone variations bodybuilders are using are modified versions of Trenbolone itself, 
called Tren Ester Pro Drugs. These are designed to metabolize into trenbolone after administration, enhancing its pharmacokinetic properties, such as absorption, distribution, and excretion in the body, thereby increasing its effective half-life. Plasma lipases then cleave off the ester group in the bloodstream, leaving free trenbolone. This results in a delayed onset of action and a prolonged duration of effect. So even though many of the trend variants have delayed onset of action, the results are still pretty quick compared to other steroids. Trend is not for the faint of heart, literally and figuratively, because it can have serious effects on the heart, which I will cover soon. Trend is not for first time steroid users. And even for the regular trend taker, the real, trend men. The maximum recommended exposure is around eight weeks to minimize the risk of negative side effects and allow for the body to recover from the steroid cycle. This is like the least thing you want to abuse. Of all the steroids you could abuse, Tren is the one you want to stay away from the most. The average starting dose of Trenbolone ranges from 50 to 100 milligrams for beginners and 300 to 500 milligrams per week for the advanced user. However, some builders reach up to 800 milligrams per week, though risking serious side effects, which we will also discuss shortly. Trend is becoming increasingly popular for a few reasons, one of which is how it enhances protein sparing. Protein sparing refers to the processes by which the body preserves its muscle tissue during periods of calorie restriction or intense physical activity. This affects why it seems the gains just keep on coming. There's a difference between accrual and like degradation of lean muscle tissue. So trend works by boosting muscle growth or accrual and slowing down muscle breakdown, degradation. This means it helps muscles stay strong and grow even when you're not eating a lot or working out really hard, which is why it works particularly well in calorie deficit. Also, because of this drug's unique balance of androgenic and anabolic effects compared to testosterone esters like testosterone propionate and cypionate, it's very appealing to bodybuilders wanting to mitigate side effects. It has reduced androgenic activity in comparison, which means masculine effects like deepening of the voice and facial hair growth have lessened. However, a review written by F. Newman suggests conflicting findings, noting that Tren is actually three to five times more potent than testosterone in terms of its effects on the androgen receptors. This claim was also echoed by Dr. Thomas O'Connor, otherwise known as the metabolic doc online. This drug is 300% stronger androgenically. Well, that just notes the complexity involved in evaluating steroid compounds. One thing that seems to be clear though, is that trend goes straight for the muscles and has more anabolic activity than testosterone. Testosterone can also lead to issues like hair loss, gynecomastia, breast growth in men, and oily skin because it is broken down into other hormones like DHT or dihydrotestosterone and estradiol by enzymes like 5-alpha reductase. Trend isn't broken down into these hormones, which again helps provide the user with more effects and less side effects. This combo makes it ideal for anyone targeting pure gains, mass, and strength. Tren is not classified as a SARM, though people often compare the two. SARMs refer to selective androgen receptor modulators because of their tissue specific effects, meaning they can selectively target and activate androgen receptors in specific tissues, such as muscle and bone, while minimizing activation in other tissues, like the prostate and skin. Again, reducing unwanted side effects commonly associated with traditional anabolic steroids. SARMs, however, are non-steroidal compounds. Still, both Tren and SARMs have similar effects in terms of promoting muscle growth and enhancing athletic performance, while reducing side effects. Have you heard of SARMs? They've been researching these, one, because they've got zero side effects. The difference lies in how they do it. Trenbolone reduces androgenic side effects primarily through its anabolic potency relative to its androgenic potency, while SARMs achieve reductions in androgenic side effects by selectively targeting androgen receptors in muscle tissue while minimizing activation in other tissues. However, to this day, complete dissociation of the anabolic effects of an AAS from its 
androgenic characteristics has been impossible. And though there seem to be many pros to using Tren over other steroids, it is not without side effects of its own. Let me start first with the often overlooked side effects, the estrogen related ones. And what's more terrifying to a man than not being manly? While trenbolone doesn't directly convert to estrogen, its interaction with the progesterone receptor can still result in some estrogen-like effects. It doesn't convert, it can't convert. Well, it doesn't have to convert because there's a mix on these receptors. This can include male breast enlargement, AKA gynecomastia, and men will lactate. Men will absolutely pour out and lactate because of this drug. It can also increase water retention, though many like Trend because in their experience, it did not cause this. It actually allowed them to get that no bloat, chiseled look. Okay. Maybe you should double up doses. Yeah, yeah. So yes, while these estrogen-like side effects are uncommon, it's essential to remember that individual responses to steroids can vary. No, I'm anxious and bloated. My nipples hurt. In terms of the androgenic characteristics, the masculine-related side effects, Tren can cause oily skin, acne breakouts, seborrheic dermatitis, which is a skin condition that causes redness, itching, and flaking, and overgrowth of facial hair and hair loss <laughs> from the scalp. The Tren stench, Tren skin, mm -hmm. Tren, tren look, skin, yeah, the Tren look. Other sex-related side effects have to do with our reproductive system and apply to most synthetic steroids. Hypogonadism, the reduced or absent function of the gonads. You know, shrinkage of the coconuts. As a general principle, anytime you take a hormone, you turn off your natural production of that hormone. When the brain is flooded with new hormones, it alerts the hormone managers, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, that the body has too much testosterone. Too much, bro. It suppresses the produced testosterone messages typically sent to the reproductive organs. And within hours, the male system stops doing so. So going on steroids made my dick smaller, but now that I'm on TRT, it's big again. Sperm production declines within days or weeks, usually hitting zero within a few months. And the testicles shrink by 25 to 35%. In females, the regular prepare egg follicles, release eggs, and prepare the uterus for a fertilized egg messages also stop, which can cause the uterus to atrophy. Interestingly, Tren also causes hypersexuality in men. As explained by our friend Metabolic Doc, it gets into the central nervous system, the limbic area, the area that makes a man sexual. Coming off from this drug is debilitating. I have men suicidal. I'm not recovering. My sex won't come back. However, because of the hypogonadism, it can also cause erectile dysfunction like any other AAS. And this can even last beyond discontinuation of the drug. Oh God. <laughs> there's a difference between someone's desire mm -hmm. to perform, and then there's a difference between someone's low performance. It's the difference between I can and I want to. So on the one hand, you're horny, but if you can't get hard, then Let's move on to how Tren affects the rest of our bodies. There is a risk of developing prostate cancer through the pathways involving the androgenic receptor. Steroid use will have an effect on your liver. Tren, like many other steroids, can also strain the liver, but it's typically not as harsh as some oral steroids because it's usually injected into muscles instead of being taken by mouth. It can cause kidney damage and FSGS, or focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, which is a condition where scarring occurs in parts of the kidney's filters. And the risk is heightened when a user has a genetic predisposition to FSGS already. Trend can also affect the heart. Research shows that steroids may contribute to the dangerously enlarged heart that some bodybuilders develop. We do think that you're at the upper limit of normal in terms of the wall thickness of your heart. That is most likely due to your weightlifting and your steroid use. Yeah. When the heart's pumping chamber, the left ventricle, gets too big and thick, 
it can't pump blood well. Although the muscle itself is larger, the actual space available for pumping blood is decreased and less compliant, resulting in reduced efficacy and a weakened heart. A weakened heart can lead to congestive heart failure, where blood backs up because the heart can't pump it out, and the heart slowly fills up and progressively stretches out causing a host of other problems. Anabolic steroids can also lead to endothelial dysfunction, meaning trend can affect the endothelial tissue lining the coronary arteries. It destabilizing that fragile, beautiful lifeline that you have called your endothelial tissue. This tissue is vital because it plays a crucial role in regulating blood vessel function by controlling factors such as vascular tone, blood clotting, and inflammation. In high doses, steroids can also raise blood pressure, increase red blood cells, increase cholesterol, and increase the risk of irregular heartbeat, blood clots, heart attacks, and strokes. To address these issues, some bodybuilders donate blood when there's an overproduction of red blood cells or take hypertension medications to counteract high blood pressure. No f***ing teenage boy anywhere in this f***ing world needs to be taking anabolic steroids. I mean, kids taking f***ing trend, come on man. You're gonna f*** yourself up. You can't f***ing shag your bird. Another side effect of trend is what's known as a <coughs> trend cough. The cough is often caused by something called pulmonary oil microembolism, or POME. It's a common side effect of testosterone preparations that use oil for a longer lasting effect. Basically, when a foreign substance travels through the bloodstream into the body, it can block the main artery into the lungs or one of its offshoots. This can happen when you inject any oil-based substance and the reaction comes on fairly quick usually within an hour. Your lungs man. start to be, oh, yeah. Man, I'm having flashbacks, man, all oh, the drink <laughs> cough. This cough attack can be scary, but it may not be as dangerous as it seems, as a lot of bodybuilders report experiencing it and not suffering long-term effects. Still, as a doctor, I will say, it is something you'd want to avoid if possible. One other thing, before we move on to the brain. You're gonna sweat like crazy. Not sure anyone understands that. It's something to do with hypothalamus and triggering other effects on the thermal receptors. So, add that to the list. Prepare to have your workout gear literally dripping before even starting the workout. I'm kidding, but seriously, you do sweat. As mentioned by my fellow content creator, More Plates, More Dates, some animal studies suggest that trend may increase the production of amyloid beta plaques in the brain, which are linked to Alzheimer's disease. However, it's unclear if the same effects occur in humans. Guys I've seen who cruise on trend, it seems like progressively something gets a bit off. Another commonly mentioned side effect is aggression. Though, again, this is highly subjective and is often determinant on the baseline mental state and temperament of the individual in general. But when it comes down to trend, you're violent. A 2023 study conducted by Timothy M. Patowski et al. seemed to echo this sentiment as well. It notes that users displayed extreme propensity towards psychosocial harms in terms of aggression and violence and also impulsivity regulation issues. Participants claim that it did make them more prone to snapping and that no other AAS acted on them in the same way as Trend did. It was the single most powerful contributor to psychological changes for them. Yeah. I've done Chris and Matt, crap, all this, Coke, Special K, and Trend, I find affected my mental health the, the worst. In the study, peers of Trend users also reported seeing those using Trend experiencing cognitive deficits as well as a lack of regard to others, including those close to them. So this substance-induced state of mind, a Trend version of oneself, also can cause rifts in relationships and social issues. He said, doctor, uh, frankly, I was violent. That's the word he used. There is also a level of social vigilance with trend usage that can cause distance between the user and others. Because remember, this is an illegal drug that your friends and family, especially non-bodybuilders, probably don't want to see you using. Your man's here is tired as hell. I haven't been able to sleep mainly because of trend balloons. Another well-known side effect that was mentioned in this study was trendsomnia or problems with sleep, which can have a ripple effect. One participant said, 
Yes, you get performance enhancing from it, but your sleep goes to shit. The final side effect I want to discuss with you guys is one that was mentioned in the Washington Post article I referenced earlier. This one really captures the essence of risky steroid use. PEDs can cause muscles to grow too big for the tendons supporting them. Muscles so big, they're literally ripping the body apart. As Stuart Phillips, a muscle physiologist at McMaster University states, that's when you attempt some diabolically heavy lift and you just rip a bicep tendon or you rip a pectoralis muscle. There's all kinds of disgusting things that happen. This is what makes a drug like Tren, which is known for its dramatic size increasing ability, so dangerous. To avoid potential injury, some steroid users inject extra growth hormones to strengthen their connective tissue, to strengthen the collagen in tendons and decrease fat. However, you can't pick and choose what growth hormones enlarge. This could result in overgrown bones in the face, hands, and feet, and can also contribute to the enlarged heart we've already mentioned earlier. Therefore, steroids like Tren are often used in combination with other drugs like blood pressure meds, cholesterol lowering meds, liver support, aromatase inhibitors, testosterone supplements, and others to mitigate side effects. They can also be used alongside other steroids to get the ideal balance of effects, a practice called stacking. Okay. So here's the thing, man. Everyone thinks bodybuilding is a drug-based culture. And unfortunately, the reality is it's become that. But it should be a training-based culture. And that's really the difference between the 70s, 80s, 90s, and today. And now it's the, the paradigm with the internet that's been perpetuated is, and they go, oh, wow, there's this amazing stack that some a-hole posted that apparently some bodybuilder before him has been using, so I'm gonna use that. This cocktail method can be dangerous. It really requires people to be properly informed and careful about the amounts that they are taking, the durations they are taking them for, and diligent in monitoring their health. It's a delicate, if not fragile, balancing act. Yes, there is a bodybuilding community in gyms, bodybuilding competitions, and even online that can provide advice on what stacks, meaning combinations of drugs, are the most effective or at least relatively safe. In the past, it was more like this. So there was, a, there was just two, those two books and whatever little bits of stuff you could pick up in the magazines. Apart from that, it's word of mouth, yeah? However, steroid use is still not technically legal for recreational use. So while you can get more information nowadays with the help of the internet and even some science-based stuff, most of the information out there is not approved by medical professionals and users must rely on individual trial and error instead. All the steroids no. bodybuilders taking until today, they're coming from experience, not coming from the science. That said, it seems like a lot of people who take bodybuilding seriously do regular checkups and blood tests to make sure that their health is okay. I mean, if the goal is to have a sustainable career in this industry, they have to take care of themselves. For any of you who are dealing with an injury, you don't want to use bro science, you know, if you think it's small, it may not be, it may be bigger than it is. First piece of advice, always see a professional first, get it scanned, get it checked out no matter how small. And given that steroids still require work, serious bodybuilders will understand hard work and being very regimented in all areas of their routine. So one can hope that they are being as careful as they can be, given that it is an inherently risky thing. Now, there is moderate concern that Tren is directly causing the death of some of its users, but it's not necessarily that straightforward. There have been some cases of death in which AAS have been found in the person's system. Remember all the cardiovascular health effects we talked about? Sometimes they become more than just side effects. An example is the death of bodybuilder Rich Piana, whose autopsy revealed significant spleno and cardiomegaly, or in other words, a liver and heart about twice the size of those of a normal human. And because people such as Rich take this sport to the extreme, even more so in our modern bigger is better society, many aspects of bodybuilding can contribute to the possibility of a deadly outcome. What may seem like just another harmless injection of steroids, my buddies do this and it works for them, or I'm just gonna up my dosage a few milligrams, can be a destructive addiction to the cocktail of factors in a bodybuilder's lifestyle. The accessibility of our modern world is amazing. On the one hand, this can be good because steroid use being stigmatized, previously there was a lack of available information, particularly for the people who were going to just do it anyways, but in an uninformed manner. 
But now, with abundant information available, steroid users can now become educated in the compounds that they are using. However, on the other hand, we also have to understand that this means an overwhelming amount of access to potential disinformation and to the purchase of illegal products online as well. I go on YouTube and watch this guy saying this and then another guy saying something else, like head spinning, like, what, what is it? We are constantly influenced on social media to do this or do that. Pressure to follow the trend, chase clout, and outdo the next person. Every new account I turn to is a photo of some whips carved like a god man, and I can't help but compare myself. And because of the many factors we've been discussing, we tend to operate with an instant gratification mindset. So what you'll see is people doing really risky things online because it gets the views, bro. Unfortunately, the the kids in the gym, they hear in trend, how to stand. They go in the uh, black market and buy it, which is, is not real. Just like the idea driving bodybuilding as a sport, push beyond, people are attributing that to their steroid usage. Back in the day, bodybuilders were more conservative in their steroid usage, only having the testimonies of their peers to rely upon. For Avalon, 76 milligrams is the reason it's 76 milligrams and not 200 or three, like other compounds, because it's very powerful, yeah? The competition stage, a place where bodybuilders used to go maybe a few times a year, is now all day, every day, online. So that wasn't something taken consistently that's like the peak that i'm telling you literally only if i was stepping on stage i would have to sit down and look at my health markers and everything and say this is a calculated risk well that is becoming less of an inhibitor to prolong consistent steroid usage there is no more off season and keep in mind because of the availability of black market stuff and because we want the pills asap some may overlook quality and the thing is, as with many internet related things, the bodybuilding demographic is getting younger. Young people are exposed to so much online that they may not be otherwise exposed to in their regular life at their age, and they are easily influenced. These teens simply get influenced to look a certain way, a topic which we will soon dive into on this channel, looks maxing to go to the gym, right? And get bigger and stronger. It was because I wanted to become a man. And part of being a man is you have to be big. And a lot of young teens who are sometimes known to be impulsive are hearing that and turning to steroids. If you don't believe this is possible and don't open your fucking mouth about it. In this study, nearly all users said that more senior high school students are using steroids now than when they started. And that was in 1990 with just word of mouth and availability increasing it. Imagine how much more prevalent it must be now. According to the Australian National Drug Safety Household Survey of 2019, non-medical anabolic steroid use almost tripled in the 18 years between 2001 and 2019. There are reports that boys as young as 13 are asking about steroids. That's wild, if you ask me. But if this is the mentality, the literature suggests that once you bank up this kind of muscle tissue over the years, it's much easier to retain it indefinitely. The idea, grow in your prime, AKA when you're young, because the mechanism to build muscle gets worse and worse over time. So it kind of makes sense why young people are keen to get a head start, especially when, again, the internet is full of information and it's just a click away. And I do think guys like Derek from More Plates, More Dates know their stuff, but I'm just pointing out how easily influenced people are online, especially adolescents, and how easily misconstrued something someone says can be. You know, it's all fun and games where they're, you know, in their teens, late teens, early 20s, for social media, going all crazy, ah, look. So you can see why steroids like Trend, which basically should translate to, will make you big really fast, are so popular and growing, increasingly more so in our modern world. I mean, you, you see the result very fast and you addicted for the result. However, is it worth it? To use a medication meant for bulking cows to bulk you just to be ripped? I understand the pressures that comes along with bodybuilding as a competitive sport, but in terms of the price of competition, health cannot be sacrificed because it is your health that keeps you there and allows for you to stay in the game. Am I going to choose that or some like random cattle drug that's shown to like inhibit deep sleep and cause like beta amyloid plaque buildup? We need to prioritize longevity, even in terms of having a sustainable career. 
health comes first. Remember that the usage of trend isn't limited to bodybuilders. No, just the bodybuilder using or no, no, the no, doctor no. People using want a for... quick look, you know, you're going to the beach. So with the general public becoming increasingly fixated on their appearance, drugs like these can be very appealing. This is where I'm going to conclude today because as I mentioned, I'll be doing a video very soon on looks maxing, where we will go into depth on the trend of maximizing your physical appearance. Kind of sounds like bodybuilding. Anyway, we've done some brain gains. We've exercised up here a bit. So good work today, interns. Remember, to trial Brilliant Free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Chris Rayner or click on the link in the description. The first 200 who visit the link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Sounds like a good deal to me, bro. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up to feed the algorithm. And if you are already subscribed, make sure that YouTube didn't unsubscribe you from the channel. We are well on our way to 600,000 subs, so we don't want to lose any interns along the way. No man left behind, bro. If you didn't like the video, be sure to let me know why in the comment section down below. I read as many comments as I can, and we use your feedback to make our videos better for you. And of course, don't forget to follow my gym, Human 2.0 Fitness, for free right here on YouTube, where we post content that helps you move better and prevent injury. Otherwise, as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.